Please remain standing as I invite Reverend Father Dr. Anthony Na to lead us in the opening prayer. Shall we pray? Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Almighty and ever-living God, we are so much grateful to you for the gift of our lives. We thank you for this day, this moment. We thank you for Jenny Mercies for gathering all of us here for this professoria inaugural lecture. We thank you for the gift and life of our dear university, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. We thank you for using our management, staff, and students to make this place the home of quality education. We thank you for all the efforts, the enthusiasm, the graces and favor that are gone to that. And we continue to pray for many of such blessings. Today, you have granted your own son wisdom, tenacity, research, and intelligence. And today, he gathers all of us here to give his professorial inaugural address. It is our prayer that you continue to grant him all the wisdom, the graces, and blessings that he needs, even as he leads us through this inaugural lecture. We thank you for gathering all of us here, and we entrust this ceremony into your care. Be with us, bless us, and make all that we do here to the greater glory of your name. And help us that our dear nation, our university, will continue to grow from strength to strength. These and many blessings we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. For the fourth time in this academic year, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology is presenting one of its distinguished academics to present a lecture. This evening, Professor Leonard Amekuji of the Department of Meteorology and Climate Science will deliver his professorial inaugural lecture on the topic, Cracking the Climate Change Code, the Sub-Saharan African Revolution. And it is the reason for which we are here. Shall we please applaud? <laughs> on behalf of the chairperson, who happens to be the vice chancellor, I welcome all of you, I welcome you, management. I welcome you, staff, Togbi Omamao, our students from various senior high schools, members of the media, for this great occasion. But to appreciate the significance of our inaugural lecture, shall we please welcome the registrar, Mr. Andrews Kwesi Boatin. Inaugural lectures offer a rare opportunity for newly appointed professors to introduce themselves and to present an overview of their contributions to their chosen discipline before academic colleagues and research collaborators. The lectures also serve as a platform for celebrating the academic prowess of a newly appointed professor with their families, friends, mentors, and colleagues. The Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Kumasi, in keeping with best practices in academia, has made inaugural lectures a cardinal part of his academic life and experience. As an institution of higher learning with the responsibility of solving societal problems, inaugural lectures again provide us the opportunity to showcase what has been done in terms of groundbreaking research to support national and international development. Madam Chair, with your permission, I want to mention some of the professors who have delivered their inaugural lectures in the university. They include Professor Dr. Dr. George Rekun Brobe, the late Professor Kwesi Akwansa Andam, Emeritus Professor Kishore Sen, Emeritus Professor Kwesi Kwafu Adakwa, Professor Francis Boache, 
Emeritus Professor Anthony Apeke Edimado, Professor Rafael Kasim Kasanga, Professor Dr. Dr. Daniel Buo, Professor Mrs. Victoria Pell Jobefia, Professor Richard Tuye Awua, Professor Abuaje Menye, Professor Robert Kwame Nkum, Professor Charles Kwame Kankam, Professor Richard Akroma, Professor William Otu Ellis, Professor Robert Clement Abedu, Professor Christian Ejare, Professor Divine Kweku Ahaji, and Professor Michael Poku Buansi. Madam Chair, ladies and gentlemen, in keeping with the tradition, the university is privileged once again to witness another inaugural lecture to be delivered by one of its distinguished professors. Thank you. Thank you very much, Registrar. To introduce our chairperson, and doing so on behalf of the chairperson of the Public Lecture Committee, I humbly invite the acting chairperson of the same committee, Dr. Daniel Norris Bequin. Madam Chair, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Please permit me to stand on existing protocol while I introduce our esteemed chairperson on this August occasion. Professor Mrs. Rita Kusia Dixon is the Vice Chancellor of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Kumasi. Professor Rita Dixon is an alumina that KNUSC is proud of. She is the first female to serve as Vice Chancellor of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, proud to her appointment as the Vice Chancellor and Investiture on the 1st of August 2020. She had served as the 21st Pro Vice Chancellor of the great KNUST. Following her election to the office in September 2018, she's also the, the first female to have occupied the position of Pro Vice Chancellor of our great university. Also proud to her appointment as Pro Vice Chancellor in 2018, she was the Dean of the Faculty of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences at the, at the College of Health Sciences. Professor Rita Dixon graduated from KNUSC with a bachelor's degree in pharmacy in 1994 and acquired MPharm at the same university in Pharmaconosi in 1999. In 2003, she was awarded a Commonwealth Scholarship to study for a PhD degree at the King's College, University of London, where she specialized as a phytochemist. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as an accomplished phytochemist whose research covers natural products with anti infective wound healing, anti-inflammatory, antipyretic, and anti-diabetic properties based on their ethno-pharmacological usage in the treatment and management of communicable and non-communicable disease. Professor Richter Dixon has distinguished herself. Her scientific knowledge and research expertise have impacted in the international scientific community through training, mentorship, and scientific appraisals. She is very visible on renowned academic platforms with research impact of over 24,000 article reads and more than 700 citations in various scientific disciplines. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to further mention a few additional accomplishments of our chairperson, Professor Rita Dixon is a fellow 
and a board member of the Pharmacy Council and the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, a fellow of the Ghana College of Pharmacists, and a member of the Commonwealth Pharmacists Association. Professor Rita Dixon is also the president appointee to the governing board of the National Vaccine Institute in Ghana. Professor Rita Dixon is passionate about demystifying STEM program for girls and training the youth into global transformational leaders through talks and other engagements. She has further demonstrated, demonstrated this passion through our flagship SANSO program, which was instituted to promote digital literacy among ready, needy students in Kenya West. The program has presented or has given new laptops to almost 2,000 students so far. She deserves a round of applause for this great achievement. Ladies and gentlemen, our chairperson is married with four daughters, and she calls herself girl's prefect. She's a devoted Christian and serves as a deaconess and a marriage counselor at the Grace Baptist Church. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome our chairperson, Professor Mrs. Rita Akusia Dixon, please. <laughs> Thank you very much, um, Deputy Registrar URO, Dr. Norris um, the Queen, past Vice Chancellors and Pro Vice. Chancellors, Pro Vice Chancellor, Registrar, His Excellency the German Ambassador to Ghana, our distinguished lecturer, Professor Leonard Kofiche Amekuji, Provost of Colleges, Deans and Directors, Heads of department, members of convocation, senior and junior staff of our great and noble university, Reverend Ministers here in present, Nananum, Togwiwo, Mamao, Captains of Industry, and CEOs present family, and friends of our distinguished lecturer, proud alumni of the university. My dear students, and I'm talking about KNUST students and also our students from our senior high schools, our dear friends from the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you all. A very good evening to you all. Thank you very much. With profound joy and pride, I stand before you to preside over the fourth inaugural lecture this year, to be eloquently delivered by yet another distinguished scholar of our university. This extraordinary occasion marks the continuation of a series of enlightening lectures delivered by eminent professors of our great university. In this lecture, our renowned professor will delve into an emerging and pressing global issue that will undoubtedly capture the interest and concern of each one of us. Climate change is a relevant subject matter that holds 
a tremendous potential to shape and influence the world we live in. Our climate is changing at an alarming rate, and it is incumbent on all of us to be conscious of how our activities have catalyzed this change in ways we never thought possible. Climate change has dire consequences on energy, land, ocean, coastal, and freshwater ecosystems. We graciously will leave the cracking of the climate code to our distinguished lecturer. Allow me, however, to reiterate the significance we, as a university, attach to inaugural lectures. We therefore extend our heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed lecturer, Professor Leonard Koficha Mekuji, for being a valuable contributor to this series of lectures. I can assure you that this evening's lecture promises to be very, very enlightening and thought-provoking. So, I encourage you all to just sit back, relax, and take it all in. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, today's lecture is a celebration of a distinguished faculty member of our prestigious university whose contributions to research in climate change is indeed remarkable. His ability to disseminate knowledge on both national and international platforms has firmly established him as a prolific researcher in the field of climate change. His extensive research has yielded valuable insights in climate science in Ghana and Africa and on the global front. Professor Mekuji is currently the Provost of the College of Science and his service to humanity at both the local and global levels is truly, truly exemplary. Aiko Professor Leonard Kofiche Amekuji. KNUST is extremely proud of you and your laudable achievements, and is deeply honored and excited to associate herself with all that you have worked so much for over the years. And today, we celebrate you. Well done. Does he deserve a big round of applause? Thank you. Thank you very much. We, together with your family, the Department of Meteorology and Climate Science, the Faculty of Physical and Computational Sciences, the College of Science, of course, all friends and loved ones, and the larger public, do honor you and your immense contribution through this inaugural lecture. As soon as I resume my seat, a distinguished lecturer will treat us to the topic cracking the climate change code, the sub-Saharan Africa revolution. He will enlighten and engage us with a comprehensive exploration of the factors contributing to climate change in sub-Saharan Africa. He will explore current knowledge on the subject situated within empirical context and provoke discussions about research and policy futures for climate science in Africa. Our distinguished lecturer will highlight how human-induced climate change has caused widespread adverse impacts on the environment and health. He will explain the satellite observation 
modes and address the Oxone whole concept and its importance in climate science. In steering us to a safe landing, he will share with us the physics of tropical weather systems, climate data evaluation, and contribution to complex weather numerical model, and satellite data quality checks for improved weather forecast. He will conclude the lecture by providing policy direction for improving weather information and service in the country. Now his profile. Professor Amekuji is the seventh of 10 children born to Mr. Trot Wisdom Amekuji and Madame Juliana Kokui Amevo Dumashi, all of blessed memory. He hails from Tegui in the Keta municipality of the Volta region. He started his basic school at the Ho Bangkoi Roman Catholic Boys Primary School and continued his middle school at Ho EP Middle Two School. He had his O-levels at Awudomi Secondary School, Volta region, and A-levels at um, St. Thomas Aquinas Secondary School, Accra. He gained admission to UCC 2002, where he obtained his Bachelor of Science in Physics with a diploma in education and MPhil in theoretical physics in 1997 and 2001 and PhD from the University of Bremen, Germany, 2005. Prof. Mekuji was appointed a lecturer for the Meteorology and Climate Science Program in the Department of Physics in 2008. He was appointed a senior lecturer 2009, associate professor 2015, and full professor 2020. I'm waiting for you to clap. Thank you. Thank you very much. He served as a physics teacher at Infancipim School and also served as the brilliant national science and math quiz trainer and was part of the team that won for the school the 1999 competition. Prof. Mekuji's key research areas include atmospheric physics, tropical and satellite meteorology, climatology, and data science. His research has resulted in over 90 peer-reviewed publications in highly reputable journals and over 120 conference papers. He has contributed 10 policy briefs, six book chapters, three books, and 30 technical reports. His publication covers uh, meteorology, climate science, and its impact on health. Prof. Mekuji is married to a very beautiful lady, Mrs. Comfort Elepin Amekuji. And she serves, are you going to clap for her? <laughs> Behind every successful man, eh, there is a woman. Thank you. Thank you, madam. She serves as the bezer of the Independence Hall, KNUST. And the couple are blessed with three children. Did you know Godfrey? The Lali, Jeffrey, and Etomti Cyril. Prof. Mekuji loves to relax, watching football, playing tennis, and listening to cool gospel music. That's cool, isn't it? Very, very cool. <laughs> Please. Prof. Mekuji's full profile, including grants, his service to local and international bodies and agencies, and many more, are detailed in the lecture brochure and also on our website. Kindly help yourself to all these. Now, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, with a standing ovation, with a standing ovation, please, and a big round of applause, kindly help me 
welcome Professor Leonard Kofiche, Kofiche Amakudi to take the podium. Yes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Chair and Prof, for that nice introduction. Yes, indeed, I'm going to uh, give you an exciting evening and uh, some food for thought. The Vice Chancellor, the Pro Vice Chancellor, Registrar, Your Excellency Daniel Crew, the German Ambassador to Ghana. Provost of Colleges and Directors, the Dean of Physical and Computational Science, Dean of Biosciences, all other deans, Head of Department of Metrology and Climate Science, the Head of Department of Physics, other Heads of Department, colleagues from Department of Physics and Department of Metrology and Climate Science, members of Convocations, His Lordship uh, Justice Ernest Gau, my school, uh, father in the, uh, sec, uh, in the secondary school, Togbio Mamao, distinguished guests, fellows from the Independence Hall, friends of the university, fellow Auskans, planning committee members, families, and friends. The press, students, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor for me to deliver my inaugural lecture today. In, the, in this great university of ours, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, the world best university in quality education per sustainable development goal for. The almighty God has been gracious to me throughout my journey. I am so grateful to God for how far he has brought me. Thank you, Lord. It is indeed a great pleasure that several former and current colleagues, mentors, advisors, friends, and family have come far away from who Kata, Tegbi, Accra, Cape Coast, and other places to, guess, to be guests at this lecture. As a climate scientist, it is it is no surprise that one of my favorite verses from the Holy Bible resonates with the element of nature. And I quote, the cloud poured down water, the heavens resounded with thunder, your arrows flashed back and forth, your thunder was heard in the wild wind, your lightning lit up the world, the earth trembled and quaked, unquote. Prof. Chair, this scripture shows the tremendous power of God and thunder and lightning. Have you been hit by lightning before? I have witnessed it. Prof. Chair, as a young boy walking home from school, one day, a sudden heavy, uh, heavy storm broke out. This prompted my friends and I to seek shelter at a nearby supermarket. Suddenly, a bus pulled out and a passenger stepped off. In a tragic turn of event, he was struck dead by lightning. I, a few meters away from the scene, was profoundly struck, deeply touched. The scene and the mysticism surrounding such events kept flashing through my mind till today. Prof. Chair, the memory of such events has influenced my life quest to crack the climate change code. And I hope that within the letter, I will explain the, the concept on lightning. In this letter, I will take you through my motivation for embarking on the memorable journey, cracking the climate change code, its impact on South Africa, the future of the revolution, 
and the role each and every one of us had to play. The transformative experience from the lightning strike influenced my journey, starting with BSc physics, which laid the foundation of my understanding of the physical processes and the, nat the natural world. Then I further sp specialized with an M-field in theoretical physics, diving deeper into the complexities of our universe. My test for further knowledge led me to a PhD in atmospheric and climate science, bringing me closer to comprehending the weather event I witnessed. Prof. Chair, as part of my PhD study, I took a one-year course in environmental physics. I took a course, as part of this course, I, I took a course in ocean dynamic and circulation. A component of the course was to embark on a field measurement campaign on the ocean. The trip was named Posadium 92, being the 92nd trip of the ship Posadium. Here I was a young man from small town, take me in the Volta region, from Ghana, honest, a big ship Posadium in the middle of the North Sea, dropping expensive equipment, as you can see, up to the five kilometers in the ocean to measure things that will benefit humanities. A spectacular three weeks adventure where we measured ocean depth, pressure, temperature, salinity, which are essential parameters to determine the ocean current and transport. The experience on the trip allowed me to advance my knowledge based across all areas of the climate system, the land, the atmosphere, and the ocean. Prof. Chair, permit me to briefly present my PhD research that prepared me towards cracking the climate change code in South Saharan Africa. My PhD work was a contribution to ozone hole science. The ozone hole is a term used in the climate community to represent very low concentration of ozone in a polar region. As you can see, the area which is violet, that is very low concentration. That is, that is where the, the term comes from, hole. So then that shows as a whole. So that is how the climate community came by the word ozone hole. Now, what is the cause of this? The cause of ozone hole is because the ozone reacts with the halogen compounds and other related compounds. Now, why the, do we have to care about ozone? Ozone layer is vital in the stratosphere because it protects us from harmful UV radiation. What was novel about this work was that this was the first time nitrogen dioxide, a nitrate radical, was retrieved from the lunar occultation uh, satellite measurements. The result of this work improved our understanding of nighttime nitrogen oxide's behavior in the stratosphere. Here, you find me enjoying the usual German tradition after successfully defending my PhD. I am shown here seated on a kite as my supervisor pushed me around the entire building, our, our institute building. The cover page of this book titled Stratospheric Ozone Nitrogen and Nitrate Radical Number Density Profile from Schiamaki Lunar Occultation Spectroscopic Measurement. Retrieval, validation, and interpretation published from this thesis is what you've seen in a, 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 a site. I ch my check on this book, currently as Amazon, costs $114. What then is cracking the climate change code? At the very core of the impending climate change lies an intri intricate interplay between natural, social, culture, and climate system that shape our world. Unveiling the complexity of this interplay is what I refer to as cracking the climate change code. My life work as atmospheric climate scientist has been dedicated to unraveling the climate change code in South Saharan Africa. Today, I am proud to walk you through how my work and its finding have contributed to cracking the climate change code in South Saharan Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present 
my motivation for cracking the climate change code in South Saharan Africa. South Saharan Africa is a region that covers 46 countries and has approximately 800 million people and is rich in cultural diversity with over 2,000 languages and varying traditional practices. It is home of some of the world's most iconic wildlife. Its, its diverse climate include arid, semi-arid, desert, tropical rainforest with mixed savanna, mountains, co and coast. The region is highly vulnerable to climate change and has a limited environmental and socioeconomic capacity. On the average, it is projected that over 71 million people in South Saharan Africa will become climate refugees. Ladies and gentlemen, these figures are alarming. As an atmospheric climate scientist living in South Saharan Africa, I was aware of the danger of becoming climate refugee. More also, I was aware of how much work was needed to unveil the climate change code in South Saharan Africa. Allow me to explain the term climate refugee as I, I, I mentioned. Prof Chair, ladies and gentlemen, imagine being at your home during rainstorm. It gets flooded and you are now forced to live due to flood waters in your room and you have no place to sleep. Oh, son of man, no place to lay your head. <laughs> Nadmo became the good Samaritan, decided to rescue you, providing you a shelter for, and for you and your family in a church hall. You can imagine a church hall. You leave your queenside bed and you now have to sleep in a, a student mattress. Are you not a climate refugee? Okay. Climate change poses risks to South Sarana ecosystem, and these are real. We see presently rising temperatures, changing rainfall patterns, extreme weather events, such as heavy storms leading to floods, sea level rise, heat waves, and droughts. Some of these events are driving rural urban migration, as, a, as shown in the diagram on the slide. You see, in Ghana, we usually have the drift from the north to the south, and the places that they, they get to in Accra, Kumasi, Takradi, among others. From 1955 to date, uh, this trend continues, and we see exponential increase in the urban population. This is the norm of the rest of South Saharan Africa. For example, in May to June this year, we have extremely unstable weather. Just to mention that this year in climate community, we call it, this is an Elino year. This year is an Elino year. So we expect a, a, a lot of extreme events. And that is why you even saw some raining yesterday. It's not that we don't call it climate change. That's a variability. So these are things that we we'll see uh, that are happening. That in, that's part of El, Elino year. And this happened to say that about 280 people were rescued from flood in Ashanti region alone this year. Today, this is the common experience in Ghana and the rest of South Saharan Africa in the rainy season. The slides show community displaced, injured, some injured, even death caused by flood. This occurrence has increased drought uh, throughout the country in, in the la throughout the country in the last five years, as you can see on the plot. The last five years seem to show that ex exceptional increase, and we expect this to increase in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, our collective well-being depends on a sound knowledge of the climate system. Unveiling the connection between the climate system and society is achievable through cracking the climate change code. Therefore, critical research in climate science is essential to inform policy interventions to safeguard our world. I have intentionally ensured that my work extends beyond borders as the impact of climate change knows no boundary. Prof. Chair, I would like to share with you uh, some of the research that I have engaged that contribute to climate change impact, starting with malaria control. Malaria remains a major health problem and a substantial cause of 
mortality in Ghana and South Saharan Africa. It is an infectious disease transmitted to human through the bite of infec infected uh, female anopheles mosquitoes. Uh, it, it is life-threatening. For instance, over 90 percent of the global malaria cases and deaths in 2020 occurred in South Saharan Africa. Children under five, pregnant women, and the poorest community are the most vulnerable. Many hospital admissions are due to malaria stressing Ghana's fragile health system. Prof. Chair, malaria is climate driven. For instance, temperature below 16 degrees and above 40 are not favorable for mosquito larvae development and also survival of the adults, respectively. Rainfall provides larvae uh, lava habitats for mosquito breeding, relative humidity of less, less, less than 60 percent support mosquito survival. A steady wind is favorable for mosquito movement. All these conditions mentioned are prevailing in South Saharan Africa. In, in order to provide efficient tools to support policy intervention in malaria control, a malaria model was developed called VETRI. The model is a computing framework of malaria early detection, early warning, and response. Prof. Chair, I am proud to say that we contributed to the models by developing the hydrological and temperature scheme, uh, scheme shown on the yellow section of the model framework that is being shown on this. Also, we contributed to the validation of the model by using hospital data. We collaborated with our colleagues from uh, the College of Health to do this. Prof. Chair, the Vetri model has its origin from Italy with contribution from my team in KNUSD and also from other colleagues from University of Liverpool, UK and University of Cologne, Germany. The, these illustrate the depth of my international research collaboration. Our focusing solution is new and imp an improved way to track malaria trends. It does this in a real time and, and as shown with a resolution of five kilometers. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to show a countrywide malaria case forecast from Vetri. As shown, malaria transmission is generally, uh, it's, it generally is all year round in the southern part of the country and seasonal in the northern part of the country. On this slide, the, you will see that the blue colored areas represent very low cases and yellow colored areas represent moderate cases and red colored areas represent high cases. Also, we observe that areas above altitude of 600 meters uh, have very low malaria cases. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to ask, where in Ghana will be safe then for you to live if you don't want to have malaria? <laughs> yeah, our work has shown that the good example of place to live if you don't want to avoid, if you want to avoid malaria is Abertifi in the Kwewu Mountains and Amejope in the Volta region. That was what our study showed us. So if you don't want to have malaria, go and live at this place. <laughs> <laughs> Most importantly, our tools guide decision makers on where to best use resources like mosquito nets, testing keys, and medicine. With our accurate information about where malaria is most prevalent, targeted policy intervention can be achieved. The Vetri model is currently being used in several countries uh, within South Saharan Africa and beyond to predict malaria transmission as shown in the map. A demonstration of the Vetri model is currently on display at my exhibition uh, in the foyer outside the Great Hall. When you go, the screen, the, the right screen is showing the Vetri model. And we are also looking at even prediction up to what will happen in the next 50 years and so on and so forth. We are looking at it. We were able to make this impact through QSI project, that's quantifying weather and climate impact on health in developing countries where I served as the project climate scientist. I would like to highlight human-induced climate change. Prof. Chair, there is overwhelming scientific evidence showing that human activities, particularly burning of fossil fuel for energy, deforestation, agriculture, are primary contributors to increasing global surface temperature. 
This is due to increasing greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. Here, I would like to show evidence of human-induced climate change. A critical look at the graph prof chair shows, unlike the pre-historical observation, most recent years have seen a suspicion in global surface temperature, and it is strongly human-driven, as indicated by the relationship between the red line, that is which is anthropogenic uh, force in human-driven, and then the black line, uh, global surface temperature. Moreover, rapid economic growth, population expansion, and urbanization in South Saharan Africa have placed immense pressure on natural resources and intensify human induced emission in the region, which is projected to triple by 2050. This is expected to increase greenhouse gas effects contributing to global warming and amplifying climate change indicators. Prof Chair, allow me to draw your mind to what is happening at our own doorstep, OAB. OAB watershed is widely known for its ecological significance and water supply. The watershed that contains the dam serves as one of the source, sources of water for residents of the Ashanti region. The watershed please, uh, faces the uh, detrimental consequences of rapid land degradation and deforestation. The increase in sediment loads have deteriorated the water quality and therefore increased cost of processing water. The satellite image presented in this slide here are the results of our research demonstrating that there's a, 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 a human-induced uh, impact on, uh, on this watershed. The reddish-colored area on the map are indication of human settlements that have expanded from 1986. As you can see, 86 is where we see a lot of greens up to date. Now, 2023 image shows a massive encroachment on the watershed, and these strongly highlight the role humans play in climate change. In climate change, Prof. Chair, it is imperative, therefore, to enforce laws on deforestation, ensuring sustainable land management practices, and encouraging afforestation effort at the watershed, restoring the Owabi water ecosystems will enhance its resilience and capacity to regulate water resources effectively. Additionally, evidence of human-induced climate change is shown on the slide for urban flooding. For example, in, 20, uh, in June 20, 2018, over 1,000 persons were displaced. 450 communities were affected. 210 deaths were recorded due to flooding in Ashanti region alone. Prof. Chair, ladies and gentlemen, given the illustration, human-induced impact of climate change on society, a critical step in cracking the climate change is data. Data is the key. Now, data based on the field observation from the dynamic aerosol chemistry cloud interaction in Africa, Dasiwa project is presented in this slide. Dasiwa, a regional and European uh, partnership, deepened our understanding of atmospheric processes, improved the prediction of numerical weather models, and validation of satellite data across Africa. It's deployed three research aircrafts based in Togo that monitors emission over the Guinea coast of West Africa. When you go out, there's a poster showing that uh, the, the route of this aircraft. Additionally, it deploys extensive, extensive ground-based instruments across Ghana. And these instruments, apart from Ghana, they are, we see the same instrument Benin. Similar, we have Ivory Coast and Nigeria. However, Ghana serves as the main super site. Also, we had about 17 rain gauges uh, that were installed across Ashanti region. 
this project collected the most comprehensive atmospheric data set for our region to date. I am proud to announce that I led and won the bid to host the super site in KNUST. And Dasiwa at attracted over 2 million euros of funding for KNUST super site alone, and where I served as the lead climate scientist. <laughs> Prof Chair, I would like to explain the concept that, uh, of lighting incident that I witnessed as a teenager, that which has led me to take this path of journey. Now, lightning and thunder are found in rain-bearing clouds. These clouds, we call them the cumulonimbus clouds. As the cloud grow, positive and negative electrical charges begin to build up within it. When the difference between the positive and negative charges gets too large, Mother Nature steps in to balance the books through a surge of electricity flash that we are calling lightning, which neutralizes the charges in the cloud. The different direction taken by this lightning flash creates a temporal vacuum or an empty space, which is quickly filled by a surrounding air. As this air collapses into the vacuum, we hear a loud accompanying sound, which we call thunder. The lightning flash contains about which is the danger part of the issue, the lightning power contains about 100 million volts of electricity, far more than which a high tension line can carry. Flowing at a speed of light, because it's electromagnetic wave, so it's flow at a speed of light, three times 10 to the power eight meters per second. So this is the issue, it's traveling that fast. So this can strike objects on this track within a blink of an eye. Prof Chair, as shown on this slide, is the monthly lightning climatology for West Africa. What is notable here is that we have been able to forecast the frequency of storms associated with lightning across West Africa. This allows us to make lightning forecasts for various cities and towns throughout the sub-region. Our work has shown that, for example, for Kumasi, lightning and accompanying thunder are frequent during the onset of the rain. That is March, April, May. And also, at the latter part of the rain, September, November, October, November. So watch out around this time for lightning, and soon I will explain. Now, let us imagine that this whole building that we are living in is not lightning protected. That is, it has no lightning arrester. And then the lightning decides to hit this building. What will happen? We don't know what will happen. I'm saying this because I want to emphasize that all our buildings should be protected. You should make sure that whilst you are putting out all buildings, lightning arresters are very, very, very important and you should not give room. The other thing I also want to say here is that why should you move around? It is not safe uh, standing on very tall buildings or tall trees. People think that when the trees are tall, they definitely, they, have, they are likely to track the lighting, yes, but it's not safe because you can imagine the volume of uh, uh, voltage of electricity that can hit that tree. And you, could, you standing under can be affected. So never stand under any tall tree to, as a means to, to, to take shelter. Go around buildings which are likely protected. So this reminds you that possibly my building where I was staying under the supermarket was likely protected. And so as a young boy, 13 years, I was saved. <laughs> Weather information is relevant for our outdoor activities, including farming, fishing. Without it, we are all at risk, especially with the effect of climate variability and change. 
Prof. Chair, allow me to share a story about how I provided impact-based climate information in Ghana. It all started when I was con uh, contacted by an insurance company that wanted to insure farmers in the northern part of the country. They were interested in knowing how climate patterns will affect agricultural productivity for the farmers and uh, that they are insuring. The question came, and then I think through, I thought I, I can find solution in literature. I went there, I said, oh God, then I said, I have to work. I set out with my team to provide seasonal forecast information by competing rainfall onset, cessation, and the length of the rainy season, including the expected variability due to climate change. I competed the onset using the rainfall amount, and I, I decided to again change my method, try what will happen if I use that the rainy days. And then I have, I have shown that you can use both. You can use rainfall amount or the rainy days, and you get the same results. While the insurance company only wanted this information for session of the country, country, I expanded it to cover the entire country and publish it. This is my most cited publication, as this work has implications beyond agriculture industry and relevant for other sectors of the economy, like tourism, health, aviation, transport, sports, construction industry, among others. I have also partnered Ghana Meteorological Agency to co-produce weather in forecasts that were easy to, for users to understand and, and then use. We also develop the now casting product, which we usually call, the, that is forecasting within a few hours, that's zero to six. So today you see Ghana Meteorological Agency doing impact forecasts, trying to provide forecasts for the fishing industry, for uh, farmers, for all others. What we did was unique. We brought all these stakeholders, and then we, they help us as scientists to demystify what we are doing, to let them see the climate indicators, how we sh they should, the forecast should be presented. What, therefore, we, we do finally was to provide the forecasting in, uh, to have tabular uh, description rather uh, tab from tabular distribution to visualize forms that allow us to provide climate risk indicators for them. Now, the co-production allow, therefore, for an impact-based uh, user-tailored forecast for the energy sector because we have people from aviation, now from NADMO, from fisher folks, and then for farmers. We were able to make this impact through GC African SWIFT, uh, that is Global Challenge Research Fund for uh, Science for Weather Information. And this project, I served as the co-PI and also a work package lead. Prof Chair, ladies and gentlemen, I present weather forecast for the next 24 hours for, by courtesy of KNUST Forecasters Web. Now we currently have our students providing this forecast information. It is through this story that we decide to see. So I focus. Now you can see the day temperature is supposed to be 29. The night we are expecting 24 degrees Celsius. And then we also expect that, uh, that we have only 5% chance of rain. But the humidity is about 95, uh, 85% in the night. So in the night, if there should be rain, then it's likely. However, remember that we currently have very high level clouds. We call the Saros clouds, layer clouds. That is why sunlight is not penetrating, and so we have very cold weather as we are experiencing. But remember that this can uh, gap only slight showers. If we produce a rain, we, provide, we call that rain vigors. These vigors will evaporate in the atmosphere, and that is one challenge that we face in rainfall. Thank you, because that is my weather forecast. Prof. here, ladies and gentlemen, developing the next generation of coal crackers is vital for sustainable development of our country and the world at large. For the past 15 years, I have worked diligently on capacity building initiatives, focusing on training skilled workforce, as investing in climate coal crackers will build a critical mass 
for enhancing institutional capacity in climate science. A primary example of such initiative is the Tropical Metrology and Climate Science International Summer School, which I led to organize in 2010 and 2019 in KNUST. I am currently in a process of even organizing one this year. We are still going through the process. Adopting an integrated approach, the school brought together students and researchers worldwide. For over two weeks, they engaged in lectures, hands-on weather forecasting, climate modeling, related field activities. Prof Chair, I have also collaborated with institutions such as Ghana Meteorological Agency, National Disaster Management Organization, Ghana Lands Use and Spatial Planning Authority, aviation institutions in the region, uh, NGOs among others to provide training support for their staff on climate hazard and risk management. I was involved in developing training manuals and man, uh, workshop seminars improve their capacity in climate data analysis, interpretation, and communication. Besides, I have worked with several WASCA research centers across West Africa, and all my projects, uh, that, uh, project that uh, funded projects, I always ensure that I have funded components for PhD students, contributing immensely to developing clim future climate change code crackers. Prof. Chair, I am thrilled to highlight the impact of my global mentee network uh, as we did a feedback, uh, try to do a, a feedback from the students. Uh, we are able to generate where all of them are staying. This is shown on this slide. So you see that mostly most of them are in, within South Saharan Africa. My global mentees network, which include many of the former students from criti form critical mass of climate change co crackers. My mentees are strongly represented in various sectors of the economy, as shown. They are working in academia, some are lecturers, not only in KNUSD. Now we see the, that we, are, we have a meteorology and climate science department in UNEL. All the go there, all the, the students, the product there are my products. Uh, we have research scientists, postdoctoral fellows, some are in the US. They are, um, we are having a spot in some are in the US and some are in London, among others. And some are working in Ghana Meteorological Agency. Currently, all the young staff are our students. Other related agencies as data scientists, NGO, the media, and some are even found working in the communications industry. Prof, Chair, throughout my career, I have been privileged to foster global partnerships that have significantly advanced my, my, my work in sustainable development. My research collaboration has spanned continents, including fruitful partnership with scholars from my home country, Ghana, some African countries, and extensive collaboration from colleagues elsewhere, in particular in Europe. These relationships are more than just professional partnership. They embodied my commitment to global dialogue and cooperation in sustainable development. The accompanying map visually represents uh, these international reach, which with darker shades of green signify countries where I have more co-authors. It is not noteworthy to see Germany as the leading contributor to the collaboration network, reflecting my rich exchanges with many esteemed German colleagues. My collaboration have enriched my career reinforcing the global impact of my research and the fundamental belief that addressing climate change and sustainability challenges required a unified international effort. Prof. Chair, I am happy to share with you that my research output has substantially impacted Federal Academia as shown in the worldwide reach of my citation uh, on this slide. Also, my research output covers several SDGs, from improving climate action, that is the majority in partnership, providing hunger solutions, alleviating poverty, promoting health and well-being, enhancing clean water access, to innovate, innovating in industry and infrastructure, and effective partnership. This comprehensive engagement with the SDG reflects my commitment to utilizing research 
as a powerful tool for driving societal change and working towards more sustainable development and inclusive future. Prof Chair, ladies and gentlemen, what is the future of the climate change revolution in South Saharan Africa? It is crucial to prioritize climate change adaptation and mitigation for sustainable development, such as engaging in climate smart agriculture, rainwater harvesting. People now currently, we, our focus has been uh, underground water. It's good. But the rain that is coming, we have to harvest that. That is what uh, Ghana Water has to ha find a means to uh, explore that technology. And then now that we have challenge with our rivers all over, improving land management practices, doing this will contribute to improving livelihood and help minimize crime and maintain peace in the region. Prof. Chair, permit me to introduce you to two projects which I am currently leading as PI in KNUST. These projects are CONCERT and Fury Flood and Awaska Raft 2. The primary objective of CONCERT is to provide an emission inventory for greenhouse gas gases such as carbon dioxide, methane, and natural oxide, while providing information on soil moisture and nutrients and soil carbon and their responsible land management practices uh, towards improving food security. The concept project uses cosmic ray technology to measure soil moisture. Prof. Chair, uh, it will interest you to know that this is the first time this technology is used to measure soil moisture in our region. Uh, it does this uh, automatically, it does this as erected at a point, is able to take measurement up to 300 meters. So you have a point here, when, and 300 meters, you imagine that the, the speed that uh, Usain, Bolt, Usain Bolt from uh, uh, will go three times, uh, that three of that times, that is the, the, the radius of the, uh, the measurement point. It means that this measurement will provide a good variable point for validating satellites, and then also for getting soil moisture information for agriculture. Ultimate goal of CONCERT, therefore, is to contribute to greenhouse emission inventory to enhance policy direction for ECOWAS region. For a flood, on the other hand, is a project on the current and future quantification of extreme rainfall and flood risks in West Africa. It focuses on rural and urban flooding to underpin science-based decision-making. Re this research team of Fury Flood includes climate scientists, civil engineers, and so uh, social scientists. Fury Flood extends also the Siwa Rain Gauge Network across the Ashanti region. This will provide flood, will allow us to provide flood risk map covering selected administrative district in the Ashanti region that include KMA. Prof. Chair, we, we all have to, a role to play in this revolution to highlight a few by the nation. Vector borne disease model should be used to support malaria control in the country. I therefore recommend Vetri to the National Malaria uh, uh, Control Program to improve their malaria disease surveillance and control. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Ghana Meteorological Agency has pivotal role despite their work in providing observational network for weather monitoring acro across the country. There is still the need to improve the density of the existing network. Uh, some of the networks, some of the uh, stations are even not uh, currently had challenge. Uh, therefore, government must adequately equip and empower Ghana Meteorological Agency to expand its observational network. This will enable them to proactively collect, interpret, and archive reliable climate data for climate impact studies and early warning operations. Prof. Chair, I wish to acknowledge the long-standing memorandum of understanding between KNUST and Ghana Meteorological Agency. That has helped us advance meteorology and climate science education and research and play an integral part in continuing the revolution of tracking the climate change code in Ghana. In this regard, I request the Director General of Ghana Meteorological Agency to continue fostering enabling environment that promote robust institutional collaborations and facilitate the exchange of experts and resources in KNUSC and related institutions. So far, there have been exchanges. There are times that we go there and work 
we put students, our students go on an uh, uh, internship. We also send even postgraduate PhD students to go and then do. We even set up uh, the game seamlessly. We do measurement, we do observation in terms of monitoring the weather. Uh, and then, so we have the satellite disk we have in KNUSC, we ensure that we ins ins uh, seamlessly have the same at that place so that we can collectively monitor. We want to continue this engagement. Prof Chair, Ghana, this, Ghana National Di uh, Disaster Management Organization and environmental protection agencies have pivotal role in uh, mitigating the impact of climate change. I urge NADMO to prioritize climate resilience in disaster management strategies and improve collaboration with Ghana Meteorological Agency to, for preparedness and response. Additionally, I encourage Ga the Environmental Protection Agency to collaborate with the universities to enhance emission inventory data collection, which is cruci crucial for carbon trading and finance. We can make money from that, carbon trading and carbon finance. We can make money. We, may, we might not necessarily have, this can also be a good source for us. Collaborating among all stakeholders is essential for achieving resilient and sustainable future for the nation. Furthermore, there is the need for augmenting the National Climate Change Working Group with physical climate scientists for, from the academia and operational institutions to support government efforts on climate change mitigation adaptation, thus building national resilience. Prof. Chair, we in academia are committed to nurturing and expanding the generation of climate champions who will actively work to reshape the narrative and conduct research that prepared us for impending climate disaster. Furthermore, we are witnessing the emergence of new era, the artificial intelligence, AI. AI holds intelligent, uh, hold a great potential to improve precision in weather forecasting and also climate prediction. Academia should therefore pursue AI climate driven research. Another emerging area in research is the green hydrogen energy that will minimize emission for sustainable future. Today's circumstances underscore the profound realities no one is immune from the impact of climate change, including the media. The realization should ignite the sense of agency within all media houses inspiring the establishment of dedicated climate desks. These specialized units will serve two essential functions. Firstly, it will continue to engage with climate experts who will educate the general public about the realities of climate change and its impact. Secondly, they will provide practical advice on how individuals can reduce their climate footprints and offer guidance on climate adaptation and mitigation options. The media, therefore, has a crucial role in, uh, in equipping us with climate change. Now, to all of us seated here, you think you are exempted. You are not exempted. You are also taking yours, but yours is going to be an assignment that I will take from you tomorrow. You submit. <laughs> yeah. So the quest, my assignment questions go this way. Who is a climate refugee? How does weather affect malaria transmission? How are you helping to minimize human-induced climate change? How can precise climate information improve your daily life? Prof. Chair, ladies and gentlemen, as I bring my lecture to a close, I know you are all wondering, where is the crack code? Let me show you the crack code. That is magic with traces. Why MA is the malaria is climate driven. IC is information on climate change is important. CC is climate change mitigation, adaptation. It's the way forward. Prof Chair, ladies and gentlemen, I, I welcome you to join me. Let us together crack the climate change code and participate in the climate change revolution in South Saharan Africa. Remember, it is magic with traces. Thank you.
All right. I would like to acknowledge various people who have helped one way or the other to play diverse role in making me who I am today. First, I would like to thank God for his unfailing love and protection throughout the journey. God has been great, gracious. If you know where I started from, I thank, I also would like to thank my sweet wife, Ellie Clay, who has been my solid work throughout this day. To my children, Dijonu, Dalali, Etumte, thank you for be, being joyful friends and, uh, and playmates. The Vice Chancellor for your encouragement and support. Former Vice Chancellors, Professor Kwesi Obre Dansu, Professor Obre da William Otu Ellis, Professor Kwesi Adakwa, Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Ellis Osu Dabo, and former Pro Vice Chancellors. Your Excellency Daniel Crew, the German Ambassador, thank you for coming. The Registrar, Mr. Andrew Squesi Boatin, the Finance Officer, Dimo Bafo, my hometown chiefs and elders, particularly the Ashanti Region Airway Council of Chiefs and Elders. I also want to uh, acknowledge the church, my, my head pastor is seated here, is with us here. I would like to acknowledge him. And then also, uh, I also want to acknowledge the church members who are also present here and the associate pastors. We would like to also acknowledge my, my in-law, who is being a uh, father-in-law, who is not here but represented by engineer uh, Eddie Doblo, my brother-in-law my siblings, cousins, nephews, and nieces, former provost of College of Science, Professor Boaji Menyen, Professor Robert Inkum, and Professor Ibok Odro. I especially want to acknowledge my mentors, Professor Danwa and Professor Kwesi Preku. I thank you for your commitment to mentoring me over the, over the years. I also want to acknowledge other mentors, Professor uh, Samuel Ni Odai, Professor Robert Abedu, Professor Samson Agozo, Professor William Odro, who are all mentors and collaborators in research. Course management, my regist college registrar, the accountants, and all provost office staff, my lecturers from the Department of Physics, UCC, especially Dr. Alfredo Usu and Professor Samuel Yebo Amensa, who were my MPhil supervisors. The Waskal family, especially Professor Wilson Ajeri, Professor Chereboatin, and Professor Fukuo, and Professor Kweku Aje, the present and, uh, and the former Director General of Ghana Meteorological Agencies, the Director General of GME is presently with us, it's, and including the board chair, we want to thank you. Uh, over the years, we have worked together. The head of the Department of Physics, Robin, uh, Ruben Tamaklu, the head of the Department of Meteorology and Climate Science, Dr. Thompson Anno, the chairperson and members of the Public Lecture Committee, special thanks to Rudith King and Professor Divine Ahaji for supporting during the preparation. I would like to acknowledge my colleagues from uh, the, the College of Science and the Department of Meteorology and Climate Science and Physics many other colleagues I am currently working with. Members of Convocation, I also like to thank you. I hear we also want to acknowledge uh, the Tegbi Welfare Union, Kumasi branch, and family and friends. We want to acknowledge the headmaster of Audome Secondary School, who is present with us here. My colleague, board members, and then OSWA 88 year group present here, OSWA national executives and council members, all OSWA members, in particular the students that have been serving as a patron to, all MUBA, that is all students from Fantabin Secondary School present here, particular mention of Bubonet Adi, 
1999 Mobile National Science Quiz team member who is present with us here, Professor Emmanuel Akowa, the Mobile 2001 member, National Science and Team, uh, who is also already a staff and has, has been part of even the preparation phase. All students from uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, Sindon High School, who are present here. Now, all students of Qatar Secondary School who are present here. Here, I would want to thank the chair of my inaugural lecture committee, Professor David Doche Vermega, who has, happens to be one of my former students in Qatar Secondary School. And members of the committee, most of whom are part of my students, and they are here. Dr. Achana Brichum, Dr. Sereboatin, Dr. Jeffrey Niai, Dr. Edmond Yamba, Dr. Henry uh, Martin, Dr. Emmanuel Kwanza, Dr. Linus Labik, Dr. Winifred Atia, Doc, Dr. Gift Dumeda, Professor Brad Kwachiwa, Mrs. Gradis Adai, Mr. Marcus Monsa Henaku, Professor Emmanuel Akowa again, he has he also been the part of and all my students who have always challenged me and helped me to always be on top of what I do. Thank you. All high school teachers and students present here, and finally, everyone who has joined us physically and online. At this time, I would like to call my elder sister, who is standing, as I dedicate this lecture to the memory of our parents. that we observe a mini silence for them. In fact, they provided all my support that I needed in my foundation years. My father personally stole me off at the airport when I, when I left for my PhD and blessed me. Three months later, he passed on. May their soul rest in perfect peace. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Leonard Amekuji of the Department of Meteorology and Climate Science has delivered his professorial inaugural lecture on the topic, Cracking the Climate Change Code, the Sub-Saharan Africa Revolution. Shall we please applaud him? I stand on his acknowledgement to confirm that he has done it, so it means I have no acknowledgement to deliver. As part of our tradition, having delivered his inaugural lecture, the Vice Chancellor, the Registrar, and Chairperson of the Public Lecture Committee of KNUST shall remove. <laughs>
Thank you very much, Ejako Nimo. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Chancellor, Registrar, and Dr. Bequin. Now, we move to the next stage to congratulate him. And uh, to start, I will invite Prof. Amekuji's wife, Mrs. Comfort Eli Klim Amekuji, supported by the children, Jejonu, Delali, and Etumate, to present the bouquet of flowers and congratulate him. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. I believe that's what everybody was waiting for. Okay, so... Okay. College of Science, please be on standby to present your award and then Department of Meteorology and Climate Science will be next to be followed by Department of Physics. Living Waters Assemblies of God will follow and then the last will be all students in of Audo Senior High School. So before the prizes are presented. I respectfully invite our distinguished dignitaries to congratulate Professor. I will begin first with former Vice Chancellor Professor Kwesi Kwafo Adakwa, to be followed by Professor William Otuelis, Professor Kwesi Obri Danso, and all three are former Vice Chancellors, <laughs> Professor Peter Donko, Professor Charles Ansa, these two are former Pro Vice Chancellors. I invite Ambassador Daniel Crow, uh, His Excellency German Ambassador to the Republic of Ghana. And then representing the Paramount Chief of Ave Dapa, Togbi Nyameko Glakwe the Faith, I invite Togbi Ayataku Abota to congratulate a son. That's Togbi congratulating a son of his land. Now I invite all professors to congratulate Professor Amekuji. All right, so all professors, please take your turns to congratulate him.
I respectfully invite Justice Ernest Gawu, Supreme Court Judge, Republic of Ghana, to congratulate Professor Mekuji. Thank you very much. Now, the presentation of um, prizes and citations to Professor Amekuji. Shall we please invite the College of Science? Next to do the presentation is the Department of Meteorology and Climate Science. Department of Physics.
Hello. Hello. All right. So we are back. Thank you, Eja Konimo. Um, may I please have your attention as I acknowledge the following people who graced this occasion. In no particular order, shall we please applaud the German ambassador to the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Daniel Crow, and also Supreme Court Judge um, Ernest Gau. Thank you very much for coming. Former Vice Chancellor Professor KK Adakwa, <laughs> former Vice Chancellor Professor William Otu Ellis, <laughs> former Vice Chancellor Professor Kwesi Obri Danso, <laughs> former Pro Vice Chancellor Professor Peter Donko, <laughs> former Pro Vice Chancellor Professor Charles Ansan. All our provosts, our directors, deputy registrars, deans, HODs, members of staff, students, members of the media, we thank you for coming. We also acknowledge Mama Eyi Kadai, Queen Mother of Everest in the Ashanti region, Togbe Ayewada, Acting Chair of Everest Chieftaincy Council, Honorable Roxin Nelson Dofiamapo, MP South Dai. Honorable Isaac George Amon, Board Chair, Ghana Meteorological Agency. Mr. Eric Esuman, Acting Director General, Ghana Meteorological Agency. The Head Pastor of Living Waters Assemblies of God's Church, Kumasi, thanks for coming. Mr. Karaj Meteku, Headmaster, Awudome Senior High School. Lawyer Justin Amenuvo, Amenuvo and Associates in Accra. Dr. Jikun, Board Chair, Old Students Union of Awu School. Mr. MSS, Reverend Tony G. Amuakuhene. Professor Shelter Dovlo, Professor Kujo Dovlo, Engineer Edward Dovlo, Colonel Dr. Godson Edeko, Professor Dennis W. Aheto, the Director of the Center for Coastal Management, the African Center for Excellence in Coastal Resilience of UCC, Dr. Precious Agbeko, Mata Deputy Director of the African Center of Excellence in Coastal Resilience, UCC, Professor Nana A. Brown Kluche, Department of Physics, University of Ghana, Dr. Samuel Atara, Department of Physics, University of Ghana. Professor Frederick Sam, Department of Physics, UCC. Dr. Sefa Intri Ba, Department of Physics, UCC. Dr. Nana Ajiman Prempe, Head, Department of Atmospheric and Climate Sciences of UNED. Dr. Frederick Otulabi, Lecturer, Department of Atmospheric and Climate Sciences, UNED. Dr. Caleb Mensah, Lecturer, Department of Atmospheric and Climate Sciences UNEL, Mr. Cosmos Senyo Vemega, Lecturer, Department of Atmospheric and Climate Sciences of UNEL. Depart 
Mr. Daniel Eliklim Ajahu, Manager, Coco Quality Division. Mr. and Mrs. Emil Elikem Amenuvo. Mr. Godfred Mode, Chief Internal Auditor, Ministry of Environment, Science and Technology and Innovation. Dr. Elizabeth Awini, Mrs. Olivia Vodugu, Ghana Coco Board, members of the Tegbi Union, Bubune Adi, members of Living Waters who came, thank you for coming. Osua 98, Osua KNUSC branch, headmaster and students of KNUSC uh, SHS, staff and students of the same school, Vosa KNUSC, we acknowledge all of you. Thank you very much. When the program is over, invited guests and members of convocation shall be refreshed at the senior staff clubhouse. <laughs> Students, you will stay here for a special arrangement. <laughs> and a very special announcement, since man shall not live by bread alone, the university is looking at developmental projects and therefore has instituted the KNUSD Day of Giving. Shall we please watch what we have on the screen? day of giving. Now, that was from the vice chancellor who is the history making first female vice chancellor. Now, the first female SRC president says this sits in her vision. Shall we have that please?
26th of October to donate. The details for the donation will be on the screen. So for those who have delivered the uh, inaugural lectures and uh, professorial lectures, uh, we'll be waiting on your donation. Talk to you, Mama. I'm going to the Hall of Residence. I'm going to be able to get to the Hall of Residence. I'm going to be able to get to the Hall of na contribute like a new city day of give you a merry a bad name you have your choice take me fast school they walk out of bed i'm not that middle of the name me i contribute now in this year all right shall we now please rise for our closing prayer Please let us pray. Our Lord and our Master, we praise and bless your holy and mighty name for the gift of our lives and the gift of today. Indeed, this is the day you have made, and you have made it a very fulfilling one for us. We give you all the glory and the praise for the life of this great and noble university, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. We thank you for how you continue to glorify the efforts of this university, making us the number one destination for quality education in the whole wide world. This indeed is your doing, and we give you the praise. One of such is what we have witnessed this evening. We thank you for the wisdom, the knowledge, the intelligence, and the research capacity that you continue to endow our professors and our lecturers and staff which we intend, Lord, transmitting to our students. And we thank you that our research impacts our community and our society to make our life and world a better place. We pray, O oh God, that what we have witnessed today will continue to inspire all of us and to help us understand creation, to make us responsible for the creation you have made us stewards of, and we pray that all the researches that go on will continue to impact life to the gl glory of your name. We continue to commend ourselves to you as an institution. Without you, we are nothing. Let your spirit hover over us and bless us in all we are doings. Bless our homeland, Ghana. Bless this great university. And bless each and every one of us. This and many more blessings we ask through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing for the university anthem.
this remains standing for the recession of the Vice Chancellor. Thank you very much for coming. Students, stay behind so as you go out, you receive yours. Thank you.